Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Healing Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Berkshire, and today we're going to be jumping into the topic of why it can be so difficult to just accept ourselves. Is there something you've encountered in your healing work? Why, why can't I just accept myself? Why is it so hard to like myself? So we're going to talk about that today in, in today's episode. So here we go. Oh, I'm trying this new intro thing to see how this works. <laughs> so far, it's a little pumpy. So welcome again to this episode of Why Can't I Just Accept Myself here on Heal Your Codependency. I'm excited to be here with you. Before we get started, just a heads up, make sure if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, that like button, and comment below. And if you're listening via podcast, nice to see you. If you want to listen via podcast, you can find me on uh, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. And... If you're looking for tools, guidance, and further support in healing your codependency, come join the Heal Your Codependency community here on Facebook. So let's jump in here. So, Do you struggle with accepting yourself? Is this something that you've encountered over and over in your healing where it's like a resistance to accepting yourself, pushing back on that? Or a sense of shame when you think about liking yourself or treating yourself with kindness or love or enjoying being who you are you feel like a, a resistance or a pushback to that do you have us have thoughts that that repeat in your head where they're like i'm not acceptable i'm not lovable i'm not like them i didn't have this i didn't have that i don't have this quality or this attribute so why would i be acceptable why would i be wanted that kind of dialogue or internally at a felt sense level, do you feel a sense of shame or a sense of loathing or a sense of wanting to get space from yourself because you don't, it's like, ugh, don't like that. These are all signals of an internalized habit of rejection, criticism, or critiquing that we have learned from the experiences we've had with others. See, we were not born hating ourselves or loathing ourselves or believing that we were unacceptable. We were born with a natural tendency to trust our own legitimacy, our own worth, and to, to be ourselves. We were very much oriented towards, hey, I can be me. I want to go out and do me. It is the reactions and the responses of people around us that taught us to think differently about ourselves. It would be the criticism that we receive, the rejection, the um, the neglect, the uh, maybe sometimes even abuse towards ourselves, towards the things we liked, towards the way we did things, towards the things we didn't know, towards the way we learned how to do things in our world, towards uh, our personality, our body, our looks, those kind of things. When these things, are, when we've experienced a pattern of criticism, rejection critiquing, being made fun of, being shamed, being um, rejected from the peer group because of these things, we take that and we internalize it as something is wrong with us. Something about me causes them to reject me. That's the way we typically are going to internalize that, as I'm causing this rejection in some way. Then we start growing up or we get into therapy and then we start talking about this idea of accepting ourselves. Oh, what can we do to accept ourselves? What? And then internally we're like, we can't accept ourselves. Ugh, we're wrong. We're bad. We're undesirable. Here's all the reasons why. And this gets into meaning making pretty deeply because a lot of times like my experience with this is, well, I'm not acceptable because of, and then, reason one, reason two, reason three, which should be the experiences or patterns of experiences I've had in my life. And this reflects both the programming I've internalized, like, oh, their judgment of me is a fact, so now I have to, com I have to conform to it. I don't have any other reason not to believe otherwise. That's one thing we can do. Another thing is, hey, I've been trying to find reasons as to why people don't want me or don't like me, and here's the reasons. So we create this internal belief system around ourselves. So when it gets into this idea of accepting ourselves, we're just going to push back on it because it doesn't make any sense to accept ourselves. 
we aren't the right way to be accepted. So why would I accept myself? I don't have this attribute. I don't have this kind of experience. I don't have this kind of condition in my life. So no, I'm not acceptable. I remember this being very, very prominent for me growing up, especially in my teen years and early adult years where I was frequently single. I didn't have a relationship and didn't feel like I had a lot of opportunities in that area. And that made me unacceptable as a person. There was something wrong with me if I wasn't in a relationship. There was something wrong uh, with my value. And that, that messaging, that uh, meaning right there drove me to further separate myself from opportunities that I had available to me at the time. It blinded me to options and opportunities that existed there. So that's really a powerful thing going on here when we talk about how hard it is to accept ourselves. We're working against a very internalized sense of reality. We're like, ooh, my reality is I'm not acceptable. So to become acceptable, now i got to be different than I am, which further compounds the sense of being unwanted and unacceptable. So how on earth do we get out of this kind of loop? My first step in this was to acknowledge the pain I experienced in those cycles of rejection, criticism, and critique that I'd gone through growing up and well into my adult years. The pain of feeling othered, pain of feeling excluded, the pain of being judged and un, being left unknown to other people where they didn't want to know me, they didn't care, they'd made up their mind. And to acknowledge that the pain I was experiencing in those situations is real, it's valid, and it matters. So when I started acknowledging that pain, I like, oh, it really hurt. It really scared me. It really, I was left feeling really alone. Well, yeah, it, it's because it was scary. It was isolating. It was humiliating at times. It was shame, the shame I felt. No wonder I felt shame about myself. People were humiliating me publicly. That acknowledgement of the pain, that acknowledgement of the lived experience was my first step in moving into accepting myself. Because acceptance isn't, hey, I'm going to like myself and everything's going to be roses. It's more like, what has really happened or what has happened to me? What have I felt? What is really happening now? What am I feeling about that now? What do I need? How do I do things? How, uh, how do I show up? What's my personality? Things like that. There's a whole gamut to this acceptance thing. But it starts with, hey, I went through something very painful that I then took to mean I'm not acceptable. So no wonder I didn't accept myself or believe I'm unacceptable. I've had all these experiences that say that... Uh, suggest I'm not. So no wonder I concluded that I'm not acceptable. Then we acknowledge the pain in that. It really hurt to be rejected over and over and over, to be criticized and critiqued about the way I do things or the way I think or the way I look or the way I act over and over and over. No wonder I don't like myself. I was taught not to like myself. I was taught by the way they spoke to me, by the way they treated me, by the way they responded to me, especially people that really mattered to him, close friends, parents, the culture I grew up in, no wonder. So that acceptance starts with acknowledging that pain and then acknowledging how difficult and uncomfortable it can be to accept ourselves, the kind of fear that can come up with accepting ourselves because our experience has been I'm going to be rejected, I'm going to be othered, I'm going to be cast out. No wonder I don't want to accept myself and I think I need to be different because I think that's going to push me farther and farther out or farther and farther away from being accepted. I'll be further and further in the out group. There is some truth that to the idea that when I start accepting myself, there's going to be less options immediately in my life because now I'm going to see where I fit and don't. But I'm also going to start seeing something shift here. And this is a crucial pivot point in how we interpret and interact with these experiences. Rather than, oh, I'm not accepted by them, it becomes about, oh, are they someone I want in my life? 
Do they add to my well-being and happiness? Do they treat me with love and respect? Now, I am the one making the choice about who gets to be in my life, which is an elevation of respect towards myself. And it is a demonstration that I value and accept myself because now I'm choosing who comes in rather than seeking to be chosen so that I can be affirmed and that I have some sort of value. So this idea of I'm choosing people presumes that I already have value. So we're starting to work into the reality that we have innate value or indomitable worth. And then when we start operating from that, a lot of these narratives about why we got rejected begin to collapse and we start to see that, oh, rather than, oh, I was rejected because there's something wrong with me, that person's rejecting me because they don't understand when, that there's something going on in their world. There's something in them that's pushing away. So maybe it was for the best that all those kids and people growing up didn't accept me because maybe they weren't healthy for me. Maybe they weren't going to add to my life. And yeah, I still had to navigate the, the uh, loneliness, the aloneness, the vacuum there. And that was very, very painful. So I care for that. Notice how this approach of acceptance is very warm towards all the pain, towards all the loss, towards all the gaps that we live with in this. And then it, as I've practiced this, I become more and more clear about who I, the kind of people I want in my world and then I connect with them and I bring them closer into my world if they want to be closer. So it's always a, a reciprocal, consensual thing. That's the beauty of it. When we start to care for the pain that we've gone through and start to warm up to our uniqueness, our shape, per se, and its unique attributes and its unique expression in the world, we start to feel a little more warm to it a little more available to it, and we start to really know ourselves, be ourselves, and express ourselves, that starts to attract people who are looking to be with someone like us. And this is where we start to find real friendship, romantic relationship. This is where we start to create community of people that get us and understand us because we're showing up in a way that they're looking for too. And then we can see them too. And like, oh, that's the kind of person I've been looking for too. They show up the way I like. They show up similar to me. We have the same kind of value systems. There's some we can work on. That's the long road, but it all starts, at least I started off with, hey, I need to care about the pain I've gone through and allow that to be known, allow that to be accepted, allow that to be cared for in my warmth and then we go deeper and unwinding the shame moving into a deeper warmth and care and caring for the the fear and the and the um, injury we carry from all the rejection that we have lived through so that's a big process it's one that i'm for me i think i'm going to assume is a lifelong process of learning how to accept myself more and more but i always start with that pain because that's my that gateway's gotten me the most traction and the the deepest transformation in my own work. So let's see, I check the comments here. Robin shares, thank you, Marshall. Nice to see you at this moment. Tough dynamics at work today. Oh yeah, it's a whole space for you there. And that experience of not feeling included and not being understood and welcomed in your in that space. Because that's that's it's kind of the wrestle we're dealing with there. Now, when we start accepting ourselves, that doesn't mean other people just start magically accepting us too. What it will mean is we get a bigger clarity about who does and who doesn't. And then part of our work there is to depersonalize the rejections. Now, and it's deep work because <laughs> we can carry a lot of meaning and a lot of pain and a lot of power with us around rejection. And so depersonalizing it means like, hey, yeah, I can see that this rejection is more about them, what they want, now I can care for the pain I feel in that separation while also moving down the road towards other opportunities and options. This does involve navigating what I call the gap. It's called the no man's land sometimes, but this is the space between, well, I have, I have people in my life that I kind of like, that are, at least it's better than nothing, to the other area where we have more of an abundance of warm, available friendships. 
The space between that is one of the hardest places of work we'll ever do in our healing because we're going to have to explore new opportunities, new options, and we're going to, in that experience, be rejected, and we're also going to reject. Is it not good for me? Oh, they didn't want what I have to offer. And sometimes we'll get really close to something and it'll fail, but eventually it will start bringing in people who click and who will stay because they want to, and that we'll be able to choose them, they'll choose us, and this is where we start getting those longer lasting friendships and then eventually even romantic relationships emerge out of that. But it is a process. It is something that requires persistence. It is something that requires kindness and care for ourselves because it's a very difficult transition for us to undergo. So go kindly and go gently with yourselves, my friends, as you explore this. If you're struggling with accepting yourself, start with that first step of acknowledging the pain you feel about the rejections you have been through and acknowledge that, hey, of course I don't accept myself or like myself. I don't, I've never been shown that I'm likable, right? I've had experiences tell me otherwise. Acknowledging that will help us help you get into accepting yourself a little more and bringing a little more warmth and care into the pain that you've carried and what you've lived through. So go gently with this, my friends and I. Oh, and if you're looking for your next step in healing codependency, come join us for the eight factors that heal codependency permanently. Workshop starting July 29th. That's Saturday. It'll be happening at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. It's free. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and on my front page at healyourcodependency.com. Come join us and learn those eight factors to help you heal codependency permanently and get your opportunity to join us in the codependency healing system that starts August 14th. So there we go, my friends. Go gently, and I will see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.